Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and I got really good uh, selection of stock to show you in today's video. I've had some beautiful buys and I've picked some really nice pieces for today's video. Stay tuned to find out exactly what I've bought and what they sell for. Okay, just quickly before we get going guys, if you love antiques, collectibles, you're in the reseller business, then don't forget to subscribe because my channel's all about how-to videos. I go out buying antiques and I show you what everything's worth and how to identify it. So state your claim guys, make sure you subscribe. If the videos help you and you like them, I would really appreciate a like and a share to help me keep creating videos. Let's get to it. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my favourite of the group, and I'm not big on ceramics, as you know. Um, I define some of them boring, but I have an absolutely beautiful 1920s, 1930s, hand-painted crinoline lady teapot. Now, this one's made in Czechoslovakia. How do I know that? Quite simply, it says it on the bottom. Makes life so much easier. A lot of Art Deco period pieces come out of Czechoslovakia and this is a really nice example. As I've said, all hand painted, all the flowers and all that, it's all hand painted. Nice Crinlin lady and a real nice Art Deco teapot. Now I paid £10 for her. Um, we'll have a look online now and see what she's worth. She's in lovely condition, no chips, no cracks, that's always important when you're um, buying ceramics. You can have some with damage. Chinese porcelain, for instance, doesn't matter if it's damaged. But majority of collectors like their things perfect. So, anyway, let's get on and have a little look at the types of money she pulls. But either way, it is a beautiful teapot. Okay, guys. Um, these are the only two Crinlin Lady Art Deco Czechoslovakian teapots I could find. You got one in blue, sold for £48. And you have the exact same one I have, but they were asking 45 It's sold for £31.50 with £8 postage. So pretty much they've paid £40 for it. So mine today will be sold for £25. It's full results, but the other two are not comparable. So they're the only two on the sold distance, and I'm happy with my buy. Okay, um, on my next buy, we get to use that new website I, uh, I promoted this week. I've got a beautiful piece of carnival glass. Now, as you can see, look at the iridescent colours. Now, this piece is by Fenton, and it is the horse head medallion. And you have, obviously, the horse heads running around the bowl. Beautiful rainbow finish, or luster finish, iridescent, whatever you want to call it. Uh see the true color you've got to go to the base here where the metal oxide isn't and this is the green beautiful bowl in lovely condition and this one cost me eight pounds so we're gonna have a look on eBay and the hooked on carnival and see what sort of money these are pulling but it's a really nice example and green is a more unusual color for around here Normally we get marigold everything. So, beautiful. Um, and as usual, I will splice in photographs at the end because the photos do the pieces justice. Holding it up, you can't always see. So the photos will be included in the end, guys. Okay, um, another love of mine, as everybody knows, is metalware. Doesn't matter if it's gold, silver, brass, or copper. Now, I particularly love arts and crafts copper. Uh, some of the names you want to look for are New Lane, Pearson, uh, Keswick, things like that. Um, but we have a nice little stamped or embossed copper jardinier or planter. It's not signed that I can see, but I will have a really good look at it later. But just a nice... 1890, 1900, copper planter, lovely colour or patina, uh, nice shape. It's arts and crafts, I wouldn't call it Art Nouveau yet, it's arts and crafts. Uh, and it's got a lovely hammered finish all the way around. So, um, this cost me a fiver. 
and um, we'll have a look what similar sort of uh, items are fetching we can't get identical because these are all handmade you can only get similar but we'll have a look for arts and craft planters and we'll see what they fetch okay so i've just searched arts and crafts copper planter now and the likelihood is i'm not going to find anything in the same vein but we'll have a little look 165 for that planter uh jardinier 50 pounds there's a pair of small pots there so as you can see not really anything comparable so what i'm going to do i'm going to go up and we'll have a look what's actually currently available it's nothing in this old listings look at the price on that one asking three two and a half thousand pound it's a john pearson did i tell you that is one of the names to look for pearson for there pearson newlin keswick and a few others So let's have a look here. Well, that's probably comparable to what I got. Uh, this one here, sorry. It's just a copper arts and crafts plant. And to be honest with you, mine's probably more decorative than that one. And again, same as the one underneath. That looks more like a spittoon than a planter, but uh, okay. And again, £40 there. So I'm going to be up £40, £50 for my planter, no problem, guys. Because it is a nice big one and it is stunning with this embossed design all over it it's really nice okay my next piece is a bit of modern art glass and you'd look at it and you'd think it's a piece by john ditchfield but it's not pulls just the same sort of money though guys now this before i tell you who it is this is one of two pieces i bought i bought the pebble and I bought a large vase, but the vase was damaged. So I'll splice in some photos of it. No, I won't. I'm going to keep the vase photos for you. I'm going to make a video on that separate. Because what I've done, I bought that in. All the top was chipped. And I've sent it off already for restoration. And it'll probably cost me a five or something like that to have the top recut and finished beautiful. And then I can sell it as a perfect vase again. So I'll make a video on that all on his own and tell you how to get the restoration and that done. So what we got here is a beautiful pebble or paperweight and it is signed and dated. It's dated 1990 by Siddy Langley. And you should be able to see it just here. Both this and the vase were signed. Now, very collectible stuff and we'll have a look on eBay at some of the prices. So. Get ready to be shocked. Okay, so I've just searched Siddy Langley, uh, who is the maker of the pebble and the large vase I have. And uh, look at the prices on some of these pieces. 145 pounds sold, 145 best offer. 100 pounds sold, 115 best offer, 125 best offer, 85, 78, best offer there, 64, 60, 56, 50, 50 as you can see she pulls good money all the way down now to the 16 pound on the bottom there now i'm going to show you currently active which i don't always do but i wanted to see some of the prices 295 pound for 1999 vase i really hope he does a good job on restoring my vase because i'm going to be over the moon with it these are the asking prices now guys okay not the sold ones but as you can see, they're still asking some silly money. Now, the one i done research on isn't here anymore. But there's one there. 69.99 for a pebble. So I've done all right there. Okay, um, my next item is a group of items. And I have a set, or as I've said, a group of hand painted silhouettes or miniatures now they are signed jmg they're all hand painted now they don't have a huge age to them i'd say looking at them they're probably 1970s or 80s um let's give you a little look anyway they are nicely done 
you know, they're all hand painted and they're nicely framed so they'll just make a really nice display for somebody you know as a group on a wall or something if somebody collects silhouettes they're going to make a nice display now i've actually paid 15 pound for these three so they haven't come in for nothing but i do actually quite like them very elegant looking ladies um, nice proportion quite nicely painted um, not overdone you know they've held back a little which was really good so I like these um, and we'll have a look if I can find anything on the artist or on modernish painted silhouettes they're nicely framed as well so we'll see what we can find okay for this one now I have simply just searched hand painted silhouettes um, it's a cracking price there for a Victorian one, 280. It must have been somebody important. 177. So you can see some of the prices on these earlier ones are spectacular. It's a group of three there. They've just put it on as vintage. Uh, are we going to find anything along the vein of what we got? Signed M. Ross, hand drawn, painted silhouette, brass frame, 20 quid. Mine are better than M, I think. So we're not going to find anything on eBay comparable, to be totally honest with you. I've searched the uh, JMG and I can't find out who she is. Um, she's probably just an amateur drawer or artist, not a listed artist. But they're decorative enough, I'm going to be putting 45 on the three okay my last lot guys for today's video so hopefully you'll enjoy and there we have it we have a couple of car badges or car mascots well they're not mascots they are the badges um, these would be on the old cars and you'd have a bumper rail and you'd have all the different badges on the bumper rail the first one's a pretty standard one it's the AA Automobile Association still running today um so we're gonna have a look on that one that one's quite a standard one to be totally honest with you this is the one that interests me which uh, is ipa servo per amico i mean yeah now i'm i'm not 100 percent, but i'm thinking this has something to do with the police foreign police so we're gonna have a little look see what that actually stands for and that will then determine what the value is it's more unusual than the aa so i can already tell you this is going to be more money um before we even go any further now this one has got a little chip to the plastic unfortunately just there uh, so that will also affect the value uh so does pit in around the chrome everything it does affect the value on these people do like them but they put them back on cars as well as keep them in collections so we're going to have a look and we'll see what we can find out, guys. Okay, so um, we're almost there, guys. Now, I've only searched for the AA bumper badge here in a minute. And it's come up with, obviously, a few others, Jaguar and everything. So we're just going to look at bumper badges, what's coming down the line. And we'll, we'll keep going until we get to my AA. That's the wrong one, is it? Uh, maybe uh, keep coming keep going and um, that's pretty much what I got there guys it's the AA car badge is it pre-war I don't bloody know so have a look here numbers are 33E93504 I know it's going to be something to do with the numbers but I've no doubt if we keep going down it's going to be more cheaper ones there's one there 5a what have i got 3e so mine's earlier than that must be so anyway we're looking 20 quid plus for the aa now i searched ebay sold and active listings for this one and there isn't one available for sale so i just searched google and it's not the same one but it's the same motto and it comes up as international police so i was right 
So this one's going to be worth more than the AA, so I'm going to probably put £30 on this one and see if I get any bites. Okay, um, what can I say? I, that's six really, really nice pieces. I think you'll, uh, you'll, in, you'll agree they were nice items and hope you enjoyed having a look at them. Um, before I finish off, I just want to show you something that I've had made. Little story, um, this week I had a, a customer bring me back some gold on silver earrings. And he says to me, they're not gold. And I said, okay. He damaged them. They were damaged anyway. He bent them in half. And now what I should have done is say, well, I'm sorry, you've damaged them anyway. Take them away. But he's a good customer. He comes in quite a lot. Um, so I didn't want to just lose the custom because they spent quite a lot of money in you. So I decided in my head to bite the bullet and give him a refund. The, on hindsight, I should have given him store credit, but I didn't. I gave him a refund. Um, anyway, moral of the story is he didn't have the receipt. Now, I'm pretty sure I sold him as gold on silver to his wife. Um, but I, I was up until now, I've only been doing till receipts and giving people a till receipt. But what I've decided to do on the strength of this little um, incident is I've had receipt books made up. So obviously you've got a picture of me there. Then you've got my business name, the address. And then underneath there will be an itemized description of each item. If there's a condition flow on the item, that will be put in as well. Um, and if they gold on silver, that type of thing will be put in. Uh, anything that I think is relevant on identifying the item. So if I'm selling, I don't know, a bit of posting, and I will simply say sold with chip or as found. So they, they can't come back to me and say, well, you didn't tell me about a chip. It's all going to be on the receipts. So from now on, um, it was a valuable little lesson. It cost me £25 to learn, but I now do itemized receipts. So... Anybody come back without the receipt from now on is, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. If they bring the receipt back and it states on the receipt it's gold on silver or it's got a floor or something, then they've obviously been made aware of it and it's their they problem, not mine. And I will say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. So I had these books made up. Uh, they cost me about £5 a book and there's 50 receipts in each book. And I done them on Vistaprint. And to be honest, they were with me within about four days. So that's not bad. I bought a quite a few books. Um, so just as a little tip, if anybody out there is working on the market stalls or, you know, you've got your own shop, it's a lesson I've learned from. So hopefully it'll uh, help you. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Some beautiful stock. I'm really happy with it. I've got tons and tons more to film. Um, but I've got a lady coming in today for the teapot, so that had to be done. So that's why I chose these six pieces. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed having a look at them and having a look at the research. Anyway, guys, I'm going to say thank you very much. Uh, you'll find me on Facebook. I have a page in the group, Antiques Arena. You'll find me on eBay. My seller ID is Antiques Arena Clearance. I have my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com. Um, you can come visit me in the shop. It's Antiques Arena, 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Foxtrot, 45, 3 Hotel Bravo. Thanks for watching, guys.